I'm gonna put one of these uh, foamless air chamber kits into my DS1. So the inspiration for doing this is uh, twofold. Uh, one is uh, my DS2 shut off on me in the middle of the night and I've seen lots of comments online of, of people having that problem with the DS2s turning off on them and it's like, gets progressively worse. An another part is, uh, is uh, you know, on this unit, I, I drilled holes in it in order to help me remove the foam. I never got back to it to plug in those holes up. And I guess the final thing is I did fall for CPAP reviews, April Fool's jokes. G'day mates, I've got some massive news. And as such, the FDA has just released a statement saying Phyllis Restaurant Extreme Station 2 recalled due to potential health risks. <laughs> and after that, I ran straight <laughs> to my computer and, and ordered this thing, thinking that it was, was real, that, uh, that the new foam had, had failed. But look, it comes with uh, instructions. It's like, this is what it looks like with foam, without. It gives you all the different steps. So let's just work through this together. Let's take off the humidifier. Let's remove all the little components out of it. Step four, remove the screws from the top of the CPAP. They send you with this uh, T10. Hey, it's even magnetic. There's one. There's two. It comes with replacement screws, uh, but still I'm gonna keep up with my old ones. I got a little magnet here. I'm just gonna stick everything to the magnet. So now we're on to step five. And it wants us to uh, pry on the back of the machine through these tabs. And for that, it sends us with a little pry bar. Let's see. Oh yeah. Easy. And then the top just comes straight off. Step six. Unscrew the circuit board. Again with our T10. Take out two screws. And then the front of this will start to come loose. Well, let's see what, what the instructions want us to do. It wants us to remove the screen. It wants us to pry this up. See that little, how that hinges? And then this should just come out. You wanna be sure not to tear it. Just like that. Now we pop this loose from all of its, uh, what it's calling its fixed positions. And we can start unplugging it. Let's see if we can use the tool to help us with this. Now I think a finger might be the way to go. I'm going to do gentle wiggles and pulling. And the same over here. Then we get the board disconnected. We'll set that aside. Not too close to my magnet. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take out the uh, two screws that anchor this piece of plastic to uh, the housing. So one right here, one over here. And then we're ready to pull this whole thing out. See if we can do this without messing anything up. Give it a good pull. Is part of it loose? There. All right. So now this part of the uh, case will set aside and we're down to the air chamber and the fan. So let's go ahead and take out the screws that hold the top cover of this, uh, this thing on. There's one, two, three. All right, 
So with those four screws removed, let's uh, get this thing off. There's a the cover to that. And so here's the CPAP, C CPAP fan. I'm going to go ahead and start swapping things. So uh, this little rubber needs to come over here. Look at the routing of this, this plug here. The little isolator goes through a piece of plastic. The wire goes underneath and around the back. We're going to simulate that. So let's set that aside for just now. Get the cable free. Pop that tarp, that part out, and we get the uh, the motor out. So my fan is a little bit dusty. But can you see how there's a little bit of dust on the impeller blades there? I think I'd like to try to clean that with something. All right, here's a second magnet. Let's just see how this goes. And then we need to get this little rubber thing off here. Set that aside. Let's see if it just comes apart. Okay, comes apart nice and easy. It's really not too bad in here. Okay, that'll be easy to clean. But just getting a good look at the dust. You can see over here where it's gray. That's just the amount of dust that has made it past the, uh, the filters, I guess. So little fins in this impeller are tiny, uh, you know, Q-tip for scale. It'd be hard to get in there and do everything. So it might be a paper towel uh, folded in half, but let, let's just see. I'm going to put some uh, rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip just because it evaporates nicely. And we'll see what sort of color we can get off of here. Let's do a little test test run. I'm going to be gentle. These are very thin pieces of plastic here. Definitely don't want to break it. But look at that. Maybe a toothbrush is the way to do it. Okay, got a toothbrush. Gently used. Let's just uh, see how we can scrub on this stuff a bit. Alcohol is generally safe for electronics because it evaporates so quick, but you never know. I mean, I could be delivering the death blow. I'm just going to try to get in between all these vents, all these uh, splines. All right, to rinse everything that we brushed off, I'm just going to drizzle. So blast it out. And then let it uh, evaporate, all right? Then for this, we'll just wipe it because it's easy enough to get to. All right, this thing is dried pretty nicely. Uh, and you can see it's not gray anymore. So we got most everything off. Almost all the drops are gone. That last little bit will evaporate without an issue. So let's put it back together. I'm gonna put all these screws in. So if you uh, don't wanna watch reassembling of this thing, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how much electricity these things require in case you want to know how to size a battery properly for for you know using this camping and whatever so that'll be a, a chapter of its own and if you want to skip to that uh it'll be real quick but for everyone else let's just uh reassemble this thing because we have made quite the mess <laughs> we gotta get all this put back in right so I'm going to get these screws in I'll be right back with you. All right, so let's go ahead and put this rubber back on. Get that seated all the way down. We will take the air chamber, the new one, and uh, the opening goes down. This part goes up. And what we've got to really focus on here is... Uh, we, we seat the four little rubber, the three little rubber seats, and then also this part has a little groove it goes in. And so we'll just kind of push evenly all the way around, making sure that that thing is seated fully. 
you can look into the intake to make sure it's lined up. But there's that. We're in. Let's take this little piece. A little dusty. Uh oh. Shove that in there. Let's not forget about these. So these are the two uh, you know, little silicone rubber ports that, that plug into the the motherboard and and so the, this is where it, it measures you know what's actually going on in the air chamber so it can figure out how much pressure it has so those are very important let's take this lid we'll just line it up and we'll squish it in there get it seated it's got a nice tight gasket so pops in I guess this, at this point you could use the new screws or use your original ones. Uh, I'm just going to use the original ones. We'll get all these installed again. So remember, you're working with plastic. Don't over tighten. It's not worth uh, cracking this stuff and breaking it. The silicone gasket around here is so tight that it would probably stay on even without these screws. So just get them seated. And just a little deep 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 of the screwdriver All right if you remember how these wires were fed they go underneath this little uh, plastic thing they just drape around the bottom and then this little uh, isolator I think it's like a, a, a EM shield of some sort to keep the whatever signals coming through these wires clean that goes in there and that wraps around the top so we need to connect the air chamber to this real quick. And to do that, see what's this look like? Yeah, I'm just going to push on it like this. So I'm going to get it lined up. I'm going to set it on, flat on its face. I'm going to give a little gentle click to it. Just make sure this cable hasn't fallen out of place so you don't have to do it again. And then let's lock it in. Boom. Doesn't make any loud click or anything, it's just there. And then with that, let's uh, let's set these in place. This is kind of an ugly, dirty thing. Let's just clean that right now. So the most important thing to have clean is everything inside the air chamber. If there's dust and stuff inside the case, that's kind of gross, but uh, I don't think it would be getting into your airway. But uh, you know, cleaning as you go, just keep it up to a standard that you appreciate. So now two more screws that hold this in place. Oops. There's a second one, not too tight. I'm just, you know, sort of like finger bump, 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 bump. That's all the tightness it needs. So now we got, you know, slack in these cables. And we will reconnect the circuit board. So uh, the buttons go on top, these three buttons. All these uh, little ports and sensors, they point down, right? So when you're wiring this up, have it, you know, like that. And then we can uh, hook up the fan. And let's hook up the power supply. I don't know how to do this where I can film it real easy. Give just a gentle squeeze till it's in there. And then now you can line up these ports. You got those two right there. And you got this one over here. And then there's something over here. And that's seated in. That's good. Now there's two screws to put in here. We got one right here. And again, not too tight. All right, we're going to do the ribbon cable now. Let's place that ribbon cable in there. And then push the top down. And we're going to push it down. Hold the ribbon cable in place. And then just have this thing seated.
<laughs> just like that. Now we're ready to install the top cover. So the bottom or the back side will click into place. And then we have the two screws over here. So then we have these doors to put back on. You know, they, they, they're the ones that we kind of flexed out. So we'll just flex them back in. I need a new filter on this one, but let's go ahead and put the filter in. I, I don't have an SD card in here, but you can run it without an SD card. Uh, so this is like the cell phone, right? If you uh, if you're being monitored, making sure you're in compliance and stuff, put that back in. I'm gonna leave this out because uh, I didn't return this to Philips, and they don't need to know what I'm doing with with uh, my old device. And we're done. Now let's see if it works. You know, I guess if you're like uh, part of the lawsuit, or if you you've actually had health consequences from this recall, you know, put your old foam you know if you hadn't <laughs> messed it up like I did because see uh, this is what I really wanted to get rid of was these holes that I drilled because it's messing with the air metering and I don't think I'm getting the therapy out of this machine that uh, I'm supposed to I mean it still provides enough air that that it, I, I wake up well but it's probably not the most accurately uh, metered uh, pressure you know so just throw it in the bag and shove that in this box man keep you know, label it, uh, you know, I guess it's already labeled, same uh, sound abatement foam. And then you, know, you can write like, you know, evidence, CPAP's recall or Phillips recall. Throw that on a shelf in case you need to, need to send it to a lawyer or something, right? So what I have here is a variable power supply. So it's something that you can, you know, adjust up and down in voltage and it will tell you how much current is passing through to power a device. It will put out the amps and then convert it into the watts. Uh, so, you know, right now, just having the, uh, you know, the, the travel, you know, cigarette lighter plugged into it, you know, it, it's using 0 0.07 watts. So let's plug it into here. See if we, uh, if we come on. All right, we're, we're turning on. All right, so this just sitting here idle is using 1.8 watts. And uh, with the uh, heat and humidity disconnected, when we turn it on, all it will do is, is just run the CPAP and, and reach our uh, prescription uh, pressures, right? So I'm gonna hook up directly to the back. We're gonna turn it on. We're gonna see what happens in the watts. So it's going for 10 centimeters of water right now. I'm going to block the nose off a bit and see if we can get to a steady state. So just to maintain pressure, it's using four and a half up to five sometimes. Let's just call that five watts. We'll write that down. And there's a unit of measure to know how much power it would take in an hour called a watt hour. So it, it uses, you know, five watt hours just to make pressure. Let's compare that to heat and humidity being on. So we'll plug that in, we'll stomp that on, and then we'll turn it back on. So now if you look at it over here, 62 watts. Is that'd be 62 watt hours, right? So 62 watt hours every hour that you're sleeping with it with uh, the heat and humidity on. Now what I have here is a couple uh, you know, portable battery options. Uh, this company, Easy Longer, they, they sent me both of these. They sent me their uh, lithium iron phosphate battery and their uh, lithium ion battery. And they tell you 
on the back how many how many uh, watt hours each battery can provide. So the lithium ion one, it's a lot smaller. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a more dense you know, battery chemistry, but uh, it's a smaller total pack than the other one. Uh, but anyways, so, so this one can provide 266.4 watt hours. And the bigger lithium iron phosphate one can do 297.6 watt hours. So there's some real simple numbers, <laughs> right? So we're using five watts. And if we do that for you know eight hours, we're using 40 watt hours. And that's, that's uh, no heat and humidity. But once we turn heat and humidity, humidity on, we're looking at 496 watt hours. So that means that neither one of these battery packs can run a CPAP for eight hours. So you get where I'm going with this? That, that you'd have to have a massive battery if you wanted to use your heat and humidity during a blackout. You know, these units are both around $300 each. Uh, together, they could, they could get you through, through a night. Uh, and, and the average price of batteries seems to be around a dollar a watt hour. So, so think about what you need. You know, one night would be about a $500 battery. Two nights would be about a $1,000 battery if you want to use heat and humidity. So when you're camping and whatnot, just, just don't do that. You know, if the power goes out and you have one of these, these uh, battery packs, uh, just, just, you know, turn the heat and humidity off. Disconnect it if you have a DS1. So just using uh, the, the bigger of the battery packs as a reference point, you know, 296 watt hours available, and, and we're using 40 watt hours a night for eight hours of sleep with no heat and humidity. That means we get 7.4 nights uh, a battery backup with no heat and humidity so you know I hope, I hope that's useful uh, for sizing your your, uh, your CPAP battery okay so just remember somewhere in these rough ballparks you, you need somewhere around 500 watt hours a night to sleep with heat and humidity you need somewhere around 40 watt hours a night uh, to sleep without heat and humidity well I hope that's uh, useful to y'all you know uh, using this replacement you know, foamless air chamber in your DS1. You know, that's I think that's a good investment. It's thirty dollars or something, and you can get this thing. Uh, you know, either overcome the holes that you drilled in it, or uh, get the foam out for the first time. So, uh, anyways, y'all, it'll be good. Catch y'all later. If this video is useful for you, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Uh, I don't get a whole lot of views on my my little channel. I'd like to grow it, but whatever. Um, Peace. Catch you next time.